Today we look at the ROG Ally. Now apologies in advance because this review is going to be everywhere. And the reason for this is because what I thought was going to be a simple review of a gaming console or handheld gaming console evolved into something a lot more. Now two points before we start. First, yes, we focus a lot on the technical aspects on this channel, but I don't want to do that this time because I want to review this for what it is. It's a handheld gaming console. Yes, we will go into some technical elements, but there are certain twists along the way. Second, this is a first for me. We are doing consoles for the first time. It is a PC console, but it is my first time being a console, so be nice in the comment section. To answer the question you never asked as to why this evolved from a simple review into something a lot more, which you'll see throughout the video, is because I want to take you through the journey that I had from unboxing all the way through to actually experiencing the unit itself in the various ways that we do, which again, you will see. But we're going to do an overhead unboxing from the time that I received it because I was genuinely excited and I want people to be able to see what they can expect when they're receiving the device for the first time. So let's have a look at that. It was only after the unboxing that Shed got real. The updates. As soon as you turn on the console, there is a video that explains to you what you need to do, but I feel that it's very shallow. Because this is a Windows-based platform, you also need to update Windows-based devices or the all the Windows-based updates. Now you have ROG Armory Crate, which we'll unpack a little bit later, and then the Windows. So the next few hours were dedicated to making sure that the device was ready and up to date, and it is long and it was irritating. Once the device was updated, it had restarted so many times, etc., etc., we were ready to game. Problem no games or no gaming platforms. This is where you have to download Steam, GOG, etc, etc, and that has to interlink with Armory Crate. So I started that whole process of making sure that those were interlinked so that I could finally game. Okay, now we're ready to game. Uh, no, we have to download games first, but this is where the first technical aspect comes in. It's got Wi-Fi 6E on tri-band and it's really, really efficient, especially if you're using a Wi-Fi 6 router in order to download games. So that's one positive aspect. As soon as you've got good internet speed, you can download games relatively fast, obviously depending on the size of the game. So the commonality here is that it is not a simple plug and play device. You don't get a console and a cartridge, you insert it and you're ready to game. There is setup and it takes a while in order to get to that setup, but is it worth it? That's a question that we've got to ask ourselves. Okay, so no more teasing. Once you've done this, you really are ready to play games. But one of the things that you will notice is that when you're booting up the device, yes, you have to go through Windows sign-in, either using a PIN code or using your fingerprint to scan it. There is a fingerprint reader or using a uh, Windows password. You just log in through Windows. But what happens is Armory Crate takes over. Now, anyone that's used Armory Crate before, be it on a laptop or on the desktop, is probably going, really, that's the main operating system. But I was pleasantly surprised. It works and it works well. It's its own version of Armory Crate called Armory Crate SE. Now, what happens with this interface is that as soon as you've logged in, this interface takes over and actually converts it into a console looking interface in which you actually just select the game that you want to play and off you go. Now, one massive note with Armory Crate SE that I want you to onboard is the fact that it's integrating all the gaming platforms that you may already have, Steam, Xbox, and so on and so forth. So if you have these platforms and you have games on these platforms, this means that you don't need to go and rebuy those games. There is no ROG Armory Crate store where you're having to go and buy games from there. You're using existing libraries. Even if you do not have a call it library of games, you can get a pass with Xbox and so on, where you're able to play a plethora of games without having to spend too much. Now, this is where the journey for a lot of reviews ended. Yes, they would talk about how the feel is, and I'll, I'll go a little bit into that, but this is where my review actually starts. One thing that I do want to get out the way is the battery element. A lot of people have complained that the battery doesn't last long, but it's a trade-off. If the battery was any larger, the device would weigh a lot more. Now, holding a device like this for hours and hours and hours on end is going to have a bit of a negative effect because you're going to want to put it down. The device is so nice and so well weighted for me that increasing the battery and increasing the weight would be good, but they can't do it too much. So yes, you can use battery banks and stuff and the battery does suck, but I just want to note that 
it is a trade-off and it is something that you are going to have to live with unless you have the ability to incorporate external batteries, which is maybe something ASUS is thinking of. The device is also very well designed thermally. There are no hot spots that you can find at the back or the front where it's extremely hot when gaming. The vents do spit out very hot air, but the entire device is really cool. Just one top tip, do not put this down and it's very tempting, especially if you're gaming at night in your bed, you'll put it down on your bed. It does cover the vents and it can have a very negative effect. I did it and it does overheat when you do that. It didn't shut down, but when you picked up the device, it was quite hot. The thermal design is really good, but just don't put it down on sheets or close off any of the air venting. Now, I did warn you that this review would be everywhere because at this point of my journey, I wanted to find a dock. Asus do have docks. They don't really look like docks, but they are docks. And I do feel that these should be included in every purchase, but that's just my opinion. But I wanted to find a dock and you'll understand why just now. Just a side note that you can get eGPU solutions, but I'll discuss that at the end. Now, the reason that I wanted a dock should be obvious. If it's not obvious, you'll understand why just now. But Winx was nice enough to send me one of these, which worked really well. But with this device, now I had a handheld gaming console, laptop, media box, actual console, wait, what? Now what I want you to do is imagine you have the following, an ROG Ally, a dock, a monitor or TV, it doesn't really matter, a mouse, a keyboard and a controller or like two controllers just like that with a Bluetooth interface. With a monitor and two controllers, you have an actual console that two people can game on. You've also got a portable media device because if you've downloaded movies, series, etc., etc., onto the actual device, you can cast them to a smart TV or to a smart box and be able to watch that wirelessly through casting, so no need to connect any cables. Lastly, you have a portable laptop type device because if you can see behind me, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and actually show you that with the dock being connected, if I change the screen here, if I change to HDMI 1, that is the ROG Ally outputting at 4K at 60 Hertz onto a monitor in which I can use it exactly like a PC. Next, we're gonna go into the performance. This is powered by the AMD Z1 Extreme, which is a very high performance APU for its form factor. What I want you to note at the back of your mind as we go into the result is that this is benchmarking against laptops, so it's not really a fair comparison. But what I wanna show you is for a small form factor, just what this device can do. Onto the results, but let's first go through the settings that we use to achieve these results. All the drivers were updated up to the 27th of December. The fan test setting mode was turbo. Well, actually on Armory Crater SE, it was all set to turbo to get the best results. So all fans were set to turbo as well. And then the Windows version was 23H2. Now looking at the internal componentry, the CPU is the AMD Z1 Extreme, which is an eight core 16 thread. Starts off at 3.3 and boosts all the way up to 5.1 gigahertz, which is pretty good for single core performance, especially for mobility. The GPU is integrated, but it's RDNA 3 with 12 compute units. One thing I didn't discuss, but is important, is the display, which is a seven inch IPS display. It is 120 Hertz at 1080p. It does have a 100% Adobe rating. I cannot unfortunately validate this because of the screen size, but it is at 500 nits and I can say that it is a very nice, clear, bright screen. Memory, we have 16 gigabytes of LP or low powered DDR5 at 6,400 MT or megahertz, megatransfers. Yes, there is the debate, but that's super fast for a small form factor. The SSD is a 512 gigabyte NVMe. I've only done one test to check how well it did. And then the sound, which I'll play you a sound bite of now is pretty good. It's quite clear, but it is also optimized by Dolby Atmos. Onto the first result of you looking at Cinebench R23 single core performance. Now we got a score of 1,710 versus the sample set of 1,807. Now this underperformance could be owing to different room settings. 
I don't know under which conditions the score of 1,807 was met, but it gives us a good benchmark to say that it does perform pretty much towards its peak, but there is a little bit of room to improve. Now, the other scores I'm not gonna talk about too much, but these are your main line CPUs for your actual laptops, your main form factor laptops, starting all the way at a 6900HX to a 13980HX. So really good scores again coming out of the Z1 Extreme. Onto multi-core performance, I had a score of 14,204, which is a little bit under the 14,798 from the sample set but not too big of a difference to make me worry. Again, different settings or different circumstance, but we can see how well it performed against the others, 6900HX, 6980HX, and so on and so forth. Again, these are not the right CPUs to put this against, but it just gives us a indication of how well a small form factor portable CPU or APU performed. PCMark also delivering good results. Now this tests the overall functionality of the entire device from opening spreadsheets to browsing the internet. It's almost a very good barometer to check the overall capabilities of a device. Now 6,806 compared to the scores, you can see the Gigabyte A7X1 next to that. Well, it's actually in between that and the Asus ROG G513. So you can see that this definitely can perform up there with top end laptops when it comes to just general productivity. Next is CPU mark, which is a gauge against the thread performance. Now this is obviously very important when it comes to gaming, but we got a score of 960, which overperformed on the 5900HX, but was well under the i9, as well as the 13980HX. Again, not the best to put it next to, but again, showing what it can do in a laptop environment. Now, the only storage benchmark that I did was 3 Mark storage benchmark. Now, this didn't do well at all with a 1,406 on result. Now, I will dive deeper in later testing, but this is a 2230 form factor, so a shorter, smaller form factor, which is definitely harder to get right from a manufacturer. It's a very specialized piece of equipment. Well, not that specialized, but it is more specialized in terms of storage. So I am gonna see if I can upgrade the module to a two terabyte and see what differences we can because this is something that you do wanna upgrade eventually in your own device. It is best to get it done by a professional. Uh, I'll actually probably end up making a video on it because the sensors inside that basically, um, if you don't install it correctly and close the unit properly, it won't turn on. It's not because you did something wrong. It's just there's sensors to line up and it's a safety feature. So definitely we'll expand on this more in the future, but Again, not really that great of a performance in the SSD. 3D Mark Time Spy, as you can see, a tiny result of a 3161. Now, this is very unfair on the ROG Ally because again, we are comparing it to devices that have both a dedicated GPU and CPU versus dealing with an actual APU, the APU having 12 compute units as mentioned. So this score, really not bad. And 3D Mark Time Spy is not exactly well benched for APUs. It is really looking for dedicated RAM and so forth. So I just had to do this because it's nice for record keeping purposes. I don't want to harbor on too much about this point, but I don't think it's a bad score, but I am going to have to get my hands on devices like the Steam Deck as well as the Legion Go in order to make proper comparative results. Time Spy Extreme, a mirror of Time Spy 1,483. And again, I'm not gonna say too much because I need to have proper comparators because again, it's not fair to put these two next to each other but the data is there and we will be able to look at it at a later date. Now, all that I've just shown you happens on an APU that is pulling a maximum of 35 watts, which is just insanity. So all that we've spoken about in this review really got me thinking, do we need laptops at all? So the thought process here was that if you have a monitor and a dock at work and a monitor and a dock at home, you can have two sets of peripherals or just one that you take back and forth, connected with Bluetooth, whatever, doesn't really matter but you have a device that you can basically transport, plug in either at home or at work, and be able to use on your commute if you're taking a bus and be able to game on the way. Basically a portable mini PC. Let's go into the refinements or the fixes that I wanted to note, and there are five of them. The first one is the eGPU element. Firstly, you can only use ASUS proprietary technology, which is the XGM interface. And currently, ASUS only has a 4090. I did see 3090, but there is only 4090 on the websites at the moment. 
and it's very outpriced at about 50, 60, 70,000 Rand. There are none in South Africa, so I don't know what the price is. It does act as a, call it, dock interface for monitors, but it kind of defeats the purpose of the ROG Ally itself, because at that price, you'd probably just want to get a laptop. So the fix that I'd like to see is cheaper alternatives that actually do make sense from a performance benefit. Next is something that was mentioned earlier, which is quote unquote, the dock. I would like to see that included in each and every single ROG Ally sold because with these devices, you open up a world of possibilities with the ability to actually output a monitor display. The third point is I would like to see carry cases included or even the ability to buy a carry case that is made for the ROG Ally. You've got a very expensive device with little bits that come out like the little knobs that if you just throw it into a laptop bag, the potential, it probably won't, but there's a potential for it to get damaged and it is a very odd shape. So you can't find something that just fits it easily. So I'd like a hard shell case included with, or again, something that you could buy aftermarket. The fourth point is I'd like to see a less intense setup. This could be in that Armory crate is taking on more of the workload from, call it Windows, in updating Windows. But if this is done, it makes the simple plug and play a lot more feasible in that you basically get the device and Armory crate does everything. Maybe this is impossible and something that is a pipe dream, but it is definitely something to consider. The fifth and last point is on the design element. As mentioned earlier, it feels like you have to choose the triggers because when you're holding the device, sorry, this looks weird. So I'll take some overshots so that you can see what I mean. But when holding the device, basically you have to choose between the triggers, at least for me. So if they could extend that a little bit, I think it would go a long way in creating a more robust feel and being able to kind of commit to those triggers. But for Asus's first attempt at creating a handle console, I think they did fantastically well. Honestly, in the last year and a half, two years, I haven't been able to gain much because of all the reviews and the content that I have to push. But in the last three weeks of having this device, I've gamed more than I have in the last two years, purely from the convenience that I can game in bed just before I go to bed, turn it on, it's easy setup and easy play once you've gone through all the setup steps. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review. I will try to follow it up with more of a technical aspect into following the, the resolution. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comment section below and I'll try to get to all of them. Cheers, guys. Goodbye.